As I walk down the hallway, I get the sense that I just shouldn't be here. The further back I walk in the bunkhouse, the more the feeling overwhelms me to the point where if I get to the back left room here, my, I can feel it in my skin. It's just like needles stabbing all my skin. My name is Brent Underwood and I am quarantining in an abandoned ghost town. I first heard about Cerro Gordo from a friend of mine named Aaron. And for a long time I've had a love of kind of history, historic buildings particularly, and hospitality. And so I was looking for a bigger adventure. So he texted to me almost as a joke saying like, look at this, LOL, I know you're looking for a bigger project. Thought it was amazing. Uh, started reading everything that I could learn about the property. And I think I just immediately became obsessed. We ended up purchasing the property on uh, Friday the 13th, which makes sense for a ghost town. What we're trying to do eventually is allow people to come and stay overnight. So for the past 21 years, Cerro Gordo has a caretaker named Robert. And when the coronavirus hit, Robert wanted to go home to be with his wife. And so I was living in Austin, Texas, and I thought, what better time to spend more time at Cerro Gordo, you know, get to work on these projects that we need to do. So I packed up my truck, thinking that I would be able to go and resupply shortly thereafter. And I drove almost 24 hours straight to get here. We have a seven mile road leading up here. You go from 2000 feet in elevation to 8,500 feet in elevation. And the night I arrived, I arrived in the middle of a huge snowstorm. So my truck didn't even make it all the way into the town. And I was just in this blizzard where I had to walk the rest of the way. And in the morning, the snow was almost over my tires. We had night after night after night of snow. There's no way of getting out. You know, these are roads that are single lane, dirt with switchbacks. And if you make one wrong turn, you're tumbling thousands of feet down. So I was essentially trapped. I've been pretty much surviving on on canned goods, you know, tuna, soup, uh, rice, beans. Admittedly, not all the beans are, are up to date. Some of them are expired, but hey, I'm, I'm, I'm still standing for now. You know, knock on wood. You know, we still don't have running water at Cerro Gordo. Uh, I haven't had running water for the past 32 days of isolation, as disgusting as that sounds. It's part of life up here right now. It sounds rough, but when I look at what's going on everywhere else, I think things could be a lot worse. This was a town that was originally established in 1865, and by about 1890, it had close to 5,000 residents. And these were 5,000 miners that spent 12 hours a day underground mining, and then probably a few hours each night here in the saloon. The town was lively. It was the one that law enforcement really wouldn't go to. They expected miners to work out their problems amongst themselves. So that inevitably led to a lot of gunfight. Um, it was so bad that most miners would line their bunk beds with sandbags to stop the stray bullets coming and hitting them in the middle of the night. Uh, it was rumored that a murder per week happened in his heyday. And even in this card room I'm sitting in now, this is a card room that uh, had an infamous disagreement. If you still look, you can still see the bullet hole in the wall. One of the first things people ask you when you they hear you own a ghost town is, do you believe in ghosts? And I have to admit, prior to buying Cerro Gordo, I was very firmly in the non-believer category. I had heard the tales, you know, Cerro Gordo has a long and storied history about ghosts. There's famous ghosts here that haunt the saloon. There's two children ghosts that apparently live in the closet of the room that I stay in, in the Belshaw house. One night, I was walking down here after dark and I came outside the window over here and I saw the curtain open and the curtain closed and this light above me was on here in the kitchen. And so it didn't freak me out at first because we had had contractors up here helping with some projects and I had just gotten to the property that day. So I thought, oh, no big deal. Uh, the contractors are, looking, are staying in the bunkhouse tonight. So I went back to a different building. I went to sleep for the night. I woke up and I asked Robert, I was like, Robert, how long are the contractors staying in the bunkhouse? And he kind of slowly turned and looked at me and said, they've been gone for two weeks. I thought maybe there was a draft, maybe there was an electrical problem. So I got the keys to the bunkhouse, I came down, I turned off the light, I shut the curtain over there very tight, and then I padlocked the door with a lock that only I had the key to. So I was certain that the problem was solved. And then that night, the light in the kitchen right here again was on. And knowing that I had the keys, the only set of keys, and then I turned the light up earlier, it was just something that I couldn't explain. In the past month being here, I just have had more and more things happen that, that I can't explain. You know, one of the first nights here, I had my wallet and I stay in the Belcher house and my wallet stays in the Belcher house. There would be no reason for me to bring it anywhere else. 
and the saloon was locked. And I remember looking for my wallet, searching like crazy, tearing up the room, my backpack, the truck, this and that. And then finally, a couple of days later, I went to the saloon and my wallet was sitting on the bar in the saloon. And I hadn't been into the saloon. I, I'm not drinking, I'm not crazy. It's this, I might be a little crazy because I've been up here for 30 days, but at that point in time, I was not crazy. But so far my ghost experiences have been mischief in nature. They haven't been terrorizing. So I'm trying to take it with good spirit, you know? I try not to come into the bunkhouse actually. I definitely only come here in here during the day. I won't come in here at night. Um, and as I walk down the hallway, I get the sense that I just shouldn't be here. The further back I walk in the bunkhouse, the more the feeling overwhelms me to the point where if I get to the back left room here, I my, I can feel it in my skin. It's just like needles stabbing all of my skin. All right, I guess I'll walk down the hallway just because. But this is the hallway. It is not one that I would ever walk down during the evening. But as you get back here, this is the room I definitely do not like being in. So with that, we'll leave. So I have satellite internet up here, uh, not very fast. I'm not able to stream anything. So I've missed out on all those Netflix phenomenons like Tiger King, you know, I've seen people posting memes on different social media and I, I really don't know what you guys are talking about. The past time I've been doing things like taking long hikes. Um, I've been exploring a lot of our mines and a lot of our tunnels. You know, there's 30 miles of mines around Cerro Gordo. And so everywhere you look, there's a little place to duck in and look around. I think the first day I maybe went 50 yards back and then 100 yards back. And then yesterday I was two miles back in a mine, walking down a ladder, trying to find some old denim. So it's something that I'm growing more comfortable with and enjoying quite a bit. I think it's a really interesting time to be here during a pandemic because Cerro Gordo is a town that there's a lot of documents showing that many of the miners got sick during the Spanish influenza. And you know, every night when I go to watch the sunset, I walk by a cemetery that Miners are buried there because of the last pandemic. And so to be here during our current pandemic, it's, it just makes you think about your own life. And I think a lot of people are reflecting on that right now. You know, I imagine these miners had their own dreams, ambitions, hopes, and now I walk by them every night. So did they do what they wanted to do? Um, I don't know, but it forces me to ask those questions to myself. And so what are you gonna do with the time you're given? And for me, um, there's no place else I'd rather be than here at Cerro Gordo. I love it here. I love the challenge of it. I love the beauty. I'm just gonna do everything in my power to try to develop it into what it can become and have some fun along the way.